Welcome to IBCA Conclave 2017. I have with me Mr. Gopal Srinivasan from TBS Capital and he is also the chairman of IBCA. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. Firstly, firstly uh, what is the objective behind holding the IBCA Conclave with this particular theme? The India Alternatives Conclave, as we now call it, is basically brings together the entire investing community or the GPs along with a lot of the regulators, people from the government, people from SEBI, who is in many ways our mothership regulator. And the objective of this exercise is to see what is the state of the industry today? Right. And what are the issues that are seizing the minds of various constituents right. through the panel discussions? Hopefully, the outcome of this is we shape thinking as right. to what we need to focus our agenda on as a body that represents the industry. And we represent right from seed stage, startup stage, to growth stage, to buyout stage, to people who do stressed assets, to do, do real estate, to infrastructure, do credit funds. So we have a very wide range. Now we're also adding the funds that do public markets called AIF3, uh, which are basically uh, hedge funds as part of SEBI strategy. So what are those issues and how do we give voice to those that make sense for India and make sense for the industry? What have been uh, your key takeaways from the two-day conclave? I would say generally people are recovering from what they see as a slowdown in actual growth. Uh, even though it can be compared with a, a gym workout, in the last two years everything, everything has become fitter. We have much more digital transactions. We have hugely less corruption. We have much more responsive government decision making. We have a GST bill that's going to come. We have a greater inclusion of small businesses post demonetization into the formal economy. So we have a lot of positives. So I think people are just getting used to the ideas, when will the growth come? Or rather in cruder way of speaking, when will the animal spirits actually rise? I said, you know, and the general feeling is now. Uh, I always say in our industry is one where we are long-term optimists and short-term pessimists. So Always our narrative has this hint of pessimism, but what we really have to look for is what is the long-term trend. Long-term trend is everybody is raising more money. Uh, foreign investors think India is the best place, uh, is island and the sun, as, as it were. Right. Uh, MNCs who operate here are writing more checks into India. I think those are the best indicators of the long-term optimism that India is perhaps the best investment destination in the world today. Can, can you share some figures or uh, statistics, at least where PE and VCs are concerned? So last year, you know, this is a business where people are investing for five to seven years. So a snapshot in time is only that, a snapshot in time. Right. It doesn't tell you secular information for five to seven years. Uh, it only tells you cyclical information. Right. So normally we divide information to secular trends, which are broad long-term trends, or cyclical trends, for example, uh, now a unleashing of investment infrastructure by this government would create hopefully a secular trend across its impact on all the other sectors. So I would say people are seeing broader s positive secular trends, investment in infrastructure, and clearly small businesses going up, okay. digital payments happening, GST making the country more efficient, and I think manufacturing becoming more interesting in India. I think the cyclical trend is that Two years in 2015 especially, the third quarter, it's maybe a quarter to be remembered as an important quarter, which is July, August, September. There was a huge explosion of investment in the so-called mega VC category, right. which are these, uh, they use the word unicorn, which I don't understand fully myself, and I don't think it's appropriate even if I understood it. So these companies are aiming only at higher valuation, and everything they do in their business is oriented towards a higher valuation which is quite in contrast to some companies which are, I'll build great businesses, let the valuation be what it is, right? So these companies received an enormous amount of capital in that quarter, third quarter 2015, if I remember third quarter 2015. So as a result, we saw a slowdown in the 2016 calendar. In that particular category, there's a substantial decrease in terms of investment. Otherwise, investments have been pretty uh, much the same as 2015, in the year 2016, which is the calendar year. And I, th I suspect this year will definitely show the same and perhaps towards the second half of the year increasing trends. Right. I think in this business you should measure fund creation as a better indicator than funds deployed. 
Right. And in that, of course, there is uh, some positive there is, activity. There is a surge. There is a what you know, Bain talked about in their opening presentation about eight to nine billion dollars of dry powder available with funds. Right. So I think I think it, it it bodes well. Last year, some of the trends which are worth mentioning in the in the 50, 12 to 15 billion dollars of investment that took place is basically uh, buyouts took a lot of uh, right. front seat uh, attention. Mm -hmm. Big buyouts began to happen. I think Alliance Tire being bought out as an example sure. by the, I think Bridgestone, the Japanese player was one, or was it Yokohama, I don't remember, but right. that was one example. The Canadian funds between uh, CPPIB, the Canadian pension, CDPQ, and the other third fund, uh, basically the public sector fund actually committed something like uh, totally $6 billion, about 40,000 crores, uh, in terms of various infrastructure and credit commitments into India. Right. That would be a highlight. So those exits were good. Again, about 40, 50,000 crores of exits took place last year, very similar to the year before. Yeah. So those would be important trends which indicate, exits always indicate positiveness because people tend to time things for a high cycle. Right. So that's what I would uh, say. Demonetization effect, uh, not as much. What is demonetization? That's the note ban which is there doesn't affect what your PE so and VC community. I think people have even forgotten it. At least, at least uh, no P impact. and VCs. There's no impact because all growth is back in February. Right. So it basically means that. But what about the job losses? At least unskilled labor, unorganized you know, sector, 200,000. There was a transient impact. Those numbers, I don't know what the credibility is because they were all measured by people whose incentives were to throw stones at the government. So, the go so I think fundamentally from what we can see, all secular indicators are back to normal. And the government has had the chance to count everybody's money which is what they wanted to do. And uh, hopefully by April 1st, RBI will actually tell us what is the amount of money that didn't come back. Sure. And hopefully Dr. Adya, the Revenue Secretary, will tell us how much of people disclose their money under their PMGKY, the right. Gram Kalyan Yojana. Right. So I think it's, it's, a, it's uh, I personally, my personal opinion, it was a, a correction, uh, it was necessary. I'm not sure the timing was the best timing, but who knows better than the Prime Minister about that. So I think it. it uh, Some way we have to repose yeah. faith. So we have to. We had it had to be done, and I think now they're going to look at uh, shell companies and real estate and so on. So I think there's a general cleansing of the economy going on, sure. and I think it's better that we do it now than later. Sure. So how do we improve the domestic uh, capital pool in the country? We are still dependent on foreign capital. That's what we were chatting. No, I think basically just think about it this way. This is an industry which at a median is expected to give better returns than the stock market. So let's say it's a, the stock market is 13 to 14%, this industry should do 17 to 18%. Just should we not as a country let people in this country, whether it's pensioners or insurance policy holders, or whether it's just individuals, or whether it is the bank treasuries or the defense pensions, actually get access to a return that is better than what they can get in the market? Right. Do, I, do defense pensioners not need to have a more secure future by some of their assets, up to 5-10% invested in the sector? Right. It's a question to ask. So if these managers are working away, today there are about half a dozen funds in India, Indian managers, who manage more than a billion dollars each. For example, India Value Fund, or, North, or True North, Everstone, ChrisCap, IDFC, ICICI, multiples, and maybe even Kedara after the new fund flows. That's about seven managers. So they're all managing primarily foreign money. So the fact that we can have good managers in India, established. The fact they're making money, they're raising multiple funds, established. But the fact they're not making money for Indians in the investor level, they're making obviously a lot of money because they're creating jobs, they're creating employment, is also established. So I think as a country, it's good for us to start diverting more and more money. The good news, as Mr. Mahalingam shared this morning, is that nearly 40,000 crores of fresh commitments were raised right. into private equity in the last calendar year. And about 28,000 crores were actually been invested from this pool, sure. which I suppose is about $4 billion. So that's a good news. So $4 billion across, say, two years, we're talking about 10%, 11 12% of rupee money. So I think the money is available. Banks have money, insurance has money, pension has money, HNI has money. 
it is now we are working with the government as IDCA to make a series of policy changes to bring about the flow of these monies because these monies have to come in a very thoughtful framework. Correct. They just cannot be written as checks. People have to know how to evaluate a fund. Correct. So a fund comes to you and says, you know what, give me a promise of 100 crores and I will take it over three, four years and over seven, eight years I will give you returns. Trust me, I know the right thing to do. This is my strategy, this is my team, this is my track record. But the point is that at the end of this, um, how does that investor know? Because I don't even know what the companies you are going to invest in are. That's why it's called a blind pool in our business. Correct. So that evaluation capabilities, the foreign LPs have developed in a very proper way. We, are we now need to quickly imbibe. We've imbibed a million other things. We'll Correct. imbibe this also. And most of those foreign LPs employees anyway are Indians. Yeah. So that's not a real challenge for Indians. Indians love acquiring new skills. So I think uh, that is what is happening, it's underway. I think Mr. Mahalingam spoke about it. He said he's having meetings with ERDA, PA pension funds. We as an association are having meetings also. Yes. So I think success in the last two, three years will beget more success. Right. And for that, one thing I think we need to think about is performance data. This is an industry. Now, if you are investing in a mutual fund, yes. you will go to Morningstar, Money Control, e ET now, whatever, and you will find out fund performance. And you will say, hey, that's great. This fund is very good. I want to invest here. Of course, the fund will tell you, remember that past performance is no indicator of the future. But you will still make your own assessment and make an investment. If you are a fund man, if you're going to invest in a private equity fund, right, there is no data available. You, other than the assertion of, say, Gopal Srinivas and saying, hey, you know what? We have this great private equity fund. But we need to make available more secular data. In other countries, third party uh, in agencies have crafted a data ecosystem. I think that is a very important pillar yes. on which domestic capital can be built. Why do you think that hasn't happened here? We have maturity. several third parties. It's just maturity phase. It's just the industry is growing. You see, Indian money is only very small. Only Indian money is going to demand a voice here. Right. The foreign money anyway is getting through the third parties. Right. So. I think if the foreign companies want to come and do it, it's great. But a SEBI has a role to play in, you know, people are not going to voluntarily share data. They are going to take protection under the idea that this is a bilateral arrangement between the investor and me. Why should I share it with you? But as we register with SEBI, SEBI has a right. In fact, there are five columns in a data table. Commitment, how much have I promised to give? Contribution, how much have I given so far? Investment, how much has a fund manager invested? These are publicly available right. at, in a pooled level, which means by category. But how much have I returned to my investors? It's called DPI. Distributions are referred to as DPI, right? right? Distributions as a percentage of principal invested. And something called RVPI, residual value as a percentage of the principal invested. These two columns are not available. Yes. So, so even if the fourth column became available, we are off to a good start. Fifth column will make it perfect. So I think SEBI will have to get this, anonymize the data so no individual funds data is exposed. But by strategy and by category, over time we build the data. Right. And we can build it actually starting 2013. So we'll straight away start with four years data. And funds who wish to create benchmarks might even give past data. So I think data on industry performance in a manner that is safe to each fund is an important step in getting domestic capital to come. Because a bank manage, a bank treasury manager or insurance treasury manager fundamentally is asked by the investment committee, ab bataiye ki ye funds ke investment ka return kitne hai? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, they tell me. But you know, that's not enough. True. All right, so thank you so much for speaking to us and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much.